You can think of automatic watches as the bridge between their battery-powered quartz and fully hand-wound mechanical counterparts. Using nothing but movement from the wrist of the wearer to provide the power, that's the short version, automatic movements use rotors of all shapes and sizes to coil the mainspring, or the heart of the caliber, that spools and unspools or coils and uncoils in rhythmic fashion, much like the beating heart of its wearer. Here's the good news, although automatic watches are generally just a touch more expensive than quartz-powered watches, they're usually far less costly than fully hand-wound mechanical watches, and are offered up by virtually every notable watchmaker around. So naturally, we're taking a close look at a roundup of our absolute favorite automatic watches in this hands-on guide, but we're also adding another important qualifier and we'll just focus our attention on automatic watches that provide excellent builds and value at, around, or just under $500. So let's dive right in with our first automatic watch selection from Timex with the M79 Automatic. Timex has sustained a healthy amount of success over the past few years reviving and reissuing their extensive back catalog of what are now considered vintage designs. One of our favorite sub $500 automatic reissues from the storied American watchmaker is the M79 Automatic. Well, technically unlike the dedicated Q Timex revivals, the M79 Automatic is inspired by the 70s era Q Timex family, but packs in a new to this family automatic caliber and sizes the overall K-shape up just a touch to 40 millimeters, up from the average 38 or so of its close siblings. The most apparent liberty Timex took with this clean reinterpretation is the larger 40 millimeter K-size. The revived Q Timex line packed with quartz calibers all measure up around 38 millimeters on average, staying more true to their 70s original counterparts. Honestly, we're not at all mad here. We think it provides a nice option for folks with larger wrist dimensions, like our wearer here with a measurement just shy of 8 inches, with a watch that looks retro but doesn't look entirely unproportioned. The pseudo-integrated style of the case with its long, flat chamfer leading into the bracelet allows for a compact 45mm lug-to-lug, no surprises there. What did throw us for a loop was the 14.5mm thickness, not anything unsubstantial, and it causes the M79 to sit quite high on the wrist. If you look at its profile, a lot of this height comes from the black timing bezel on top, but Timex has also employed a substantial exhibition case back with a deep curvature. We thought this may have added to the tall wearing experience, but it actually ends up bearing itself into the meaty part of the wrist and helps shave off a few millimeters. Under a domed acrylic, the dial is really clean, just like the Q Timex reissues, but even more so without the Q present above the Timex logo type. A simple white frame day date at the 3, smiling text above the 6 denoting the 50 meters of water resistance of the stainless steel case, plenty of loom on the markers and inset within the Explorer-esque Mercedes handset, and an attractive bright red seconds from tip to tip. In typical Timex fashion, they don't directly disclose which automatic movement beats at the heart of the M79. But we can report that it's Miyota 8205 providing an approximate 40 hour power reserve and a beat rate of 21,600 BPH, and through the case back you'll see a few custom Timex engravings on the rotor. You can even wind this caliber by hand for a truly mechanical experience. And now as much as we love the retro cool touch of the bracelet with a simple, easy to adjust toolless clasp, it's a wicked arm hair catcher. And that's really all we have to say about that. Moving on. In terms of affordable automatics, Citizen has offered a number of solid models for quite some time now, in addition to their flagship and proprietary EcoDrive powered watches. But it was in May of 2023 where we saw Citizen punch well above its weight with the release of the Toyosa line. Here today we have the bright white Citizen Toyosa. In Japanese, the word means strength, and the bright, clean, masculine sports styling of this automatic feels wholly on brand. Plus, we love that it uses a 40mm diameter, a highly wearable size for most folks, especially in terms of a bright, full steel build, which can oftentimes exaggerate the presence on the wrist. Sub 50mm lug to lug at 49 also helps, as does the modest 9.1mm thickness. Underneath Sapphire, with a bubbly cyclops above the simple, unframed 3 o'clock date window, is an uber crisp white scheme that feels perfect for any upcoming spring and summer situations, or just as a solid all around go anywhere, do anything piece. And trust us, just look for an equally clean, all-white, full stainless steel sports watch at this price point. Your options are extremely limited. Before we move on to the case back and the automatic caliber, something we do have to gripe about is the water resistance. I mean sure, it's not technically a diver, but for such a capable presenting everyday wear sports watch to only have a paltry 50 meters of water resistance? I mean come on, we can't say we're not disappointed with this particular aspect of its build. 
That being said, let us know below if it would stand in the way of your purchase because we have mixed feelings ourselves. Peering through the exhibition case back, you have a full view of the Citizen, well, Miyota as a division of Citizen 8210 Automatic, which offers up a nice mix of gold and silver tone components, 42 hours of power reserve, and modest accuracy by way of a 21,600 bphp rate. No real surprises here with the caliber, especially for the current sub $400 price point. Something that definitely amps up its strength, so to speak, and kind of makes up for the water resistance is the solid 3-row jubilee securing the Toyosa to the wrist. Pushpin links and a push-button folding clasp with three micro-adjustments makes sizing fairly straightforward as well. We're going to stay in Japan for the time being with the Seiko 5 Sports 55th Anniversary Edition, the Seiko SRPK-17, an almost carbon copy of the late 60s Seiko 5 Sports 61 5D. Seiko, just like fellow Japanese watchmaker Casio, has been consistently releasing vintage designs. It's a great position to be in. There's an obvious demand for vintage watches, and what better way to meet that demand than to reissue the very vintage watches folks are looking for, only now backed with more reliable, easily serviceable modern movements. But how did Seiko do with this one? Well, the SRPK-17 in particular, right alongside the other SRPK models like the 09, 11, and 13, feel about as retro as you can get at first glance. There have been very, very few changes. The only obvious differences from the outside is the dial text above the 6 and the tiny smiling text above the 6 as well, to denote the updated 4R36 automatic caliber powering the reissue. Other than that, everything else is a faithful, detailed recreation. The case shape and the size, the case's finishes, the grip of the bezel, the bezel itself, the entire dial presentation, and even the single row flat link style steel bracelet. So before its release this past year, an eBay or a Chrono 24 find of the 60s original could have easily cost you about two to three times the current retail of the SRPK-17, which you can find on sale in a few spots now for just a touch over $300 and full MSRP directly from Seiko will cost about 415 If you're okay with not being a vintage diehard, picking up the 17 will ensure the reliability of its caliber at a budget price point most will be able to stomach. Seiko opted for the 4R36, a close variant of the NH36, but a Seiko-only creation that's not offered to any of their partners. It provides roughly 40 hours of power reserve, moderate accuracy with a 21,600 bph beat rate, and is utilized in a slew of Seiko models in different families. Seiko doesn't provide a view like Timex decided to do with the M79, but instead opted for a rugged stainless steel case back, which will let you know which specific edition you have out of the 15,555 limited production run. And yes, Seiko does technically call that a limited edition. On the wrist, we love the wearing experience, 39.5 across the case, a hyper-compact 43.1mm lug to lug, and a 12.5mm thickness, a lot of which you can attribute to the flat bi-directional tension bezel. Plus, the flat single-link stainless steel bracelet here is a showstopper, and only further adds to the immense character of the main case. Let's venture over to Europe now with Laco, who are nestled right on the northern edge of the Black Forest in southwest Germany. Dating back to 1925, Laco was one of five watchmakers who supplied wartime tools to the German military during World War II right alongside Along and Zona, Stova, Vempe, and IWC. Long story short, after the war they've continued to supply their heritage inspired designs with fresh automatic movements, many with price tags you can find sub $500. One of our favorites with these qualifiers considered is the Laco Valencia 39mm, using the Laco 21 automatic caliber based off Miyota's 821A. Laco is famous for their fliegers, these large pilot watch creations remain for sale to this day, whose designs speak to the units originally created strictly for military use but they also have a naval collection where the Valencia finds itself. Still military inspired, just not so much Flieger inspired. Now yes, the Valencia is part of the naval collection, but this isn't a dive watch. The Valencia 39mm only has 50 meters of water resistance, let's make that very clear. This is a heritage inspired design that was originally used on the flight decks of ships to keep time and make precise calculations. Unlike dedicated dive watches where loom is traditionally inset onto the dial by way of markers and hands, the dial of the Valencia has a trick up its sleeve. The entire cream colored dial background is set with loom, unlike the hybrid sword syringe handset, Arabic numerals, or date window above the six, so their dark silhouettes stand out against the bright C3 Superluminova background, instead of the converse. By the way, this isn't a new development, but a build quality of the 40s originals, as purpose-built tools for any and all lighting conditions a soldier may have found himself in. On the wrist, we're looking at great proportions for most folks. 39mm in diameter with a 46.5mm lug-to-lug and an 11.55mm thickness. 
You'll find that Laco is one of few watchmakers who offer up traditional military tool watches like Fliegers with accessible case sizes at reasonable prices. IWC also has a few 40mm options and some even smaller, but you can expect to pay a considerable amount more there. Plus, you're getting almost the exact same heritage as Laco and IWC rub shoulders way back when as a part of the Core 5. Inside, Lakos took the Japanese Miyota A21A and have given it a few of their own touches, naming it the Lako 21. They've also utilized it far beyond the naval line, like their budget fliegers like the Augsburg. At this price point, absolutely nothing wrong with this automatic caliber, but it is worth noting the decision to go with the Japanese base caliber over a closer to home Swiss counterpart, in other words, something from Ida. The caliber offers up a power reserve of about 42 hours, beats at 21,600 BPH, and allows for hacking seconds. And Laco's 18mm calfskin leather strap adds to the traditional and heritage toolish nature of the watch as well, and it would pair great with an attire from a similarly heritage-focused clothing brand. Philson, L.L. Bean, you get the picture. Moving ever so slightly on the map to our left, we now find ourselves in France, where Baltic, circa 2017, has made massive waves for its current microbrand status, and have produced beautiful watches that have largely garnered nothing but praise from even the most elitist collectors around. Not that you had to take their advice. As a quick side note, when we're saying that, we're thinking specifically about the MR01, which has had its fair share of budget Patek comparisons. Anyway, today, however, we're focusing our attention on the HMS002 that screams Art Deco, but we'd say screams in the most elegant way possible, if that's even a thing. If we were to put it in a box, the HMS002 could be aptly classified as a dress watch. It has enough fine touches and design considerations to make it so, far more than Baltic's other toolish options like the field-inspired Hermetique or the mid-century-inspired Aquascafe Diver. The HMS002 certainly evokes sector dials of the 30s and the 40s. You could throw a few names out there, but one that came to mind quicker than the rest was from Longines, the 1268Z, one such 30s model that uses a very similar step case and dial design. Of course, it's not a direct homage. The HMS002 does offer a fresh breath, leaving off the sub-register above the 6, opting for a much sharper crown design, and offers up a complete ring of Arabic numerals. Not to mention the stellar finishes across the dial with a mix of circular brushing on the outer ring and fine matted texture at the center. 38mm across the one-piece stainless steel step case offers up a lovely cadence of finishes, alternating between different directions of brushing and high polish until it meets the high domed Hess light over the dial. 47mm lug to lug and a 13mm overall thickness, including the dome, should appeal to a lot of folks. If, however, you want to be even more period accurate, Baltic rolled out the 003 in 2023 and sized it down by a millimeter and a half to 36.5, without changing the automatic Miyota 8315 inside. Speaking of, this caliber offers a solid 60 hour power reserve or about two and a half days and houses Miyota's largest power reserve infrastructure to date making it an excellent candidate for everyday wear that we say could be a fantastic choice in an office environment or business casual setting. Or perhaps even a spring or summer wedding. There are currently four different 002 options, three with a stainless steel case and of varying dial colors, and one, the most extravagant of the lot, featuring a gold PVD case with a jet black dial. You also have a choice between a few different color leather straps. With our black dial version, the pairing options here are endless. We didn't set out to do this, but we feel like we're giving you a grand tour of the global watch market today. So follow us again as we travel southwest now to Milan, Italy, where Unimatic has successfully blended a rugged military ethos with a stripped back modern design language to create a very singular catalog of highly industrial watches. Since their official start in 2015, they've amassed quite the catalog of core references and unique limited edition collaborations with the likes of Undefeated, Royal Enfield, and Maxfield, just to name a few. Today, however, we're focusing on a sub $500 automatic that really provides the perfect first look at the brand and communicates everything great about what they're doing, the Unimatic UC4. Part of their core classic collection, the UC4 is a hyper-refined, hyper-capable dive watch. Yes, the UC4 does look markedly different from traditional divers, but you'd be remiss if you discounted it as a mere aesthetic exercise. The thick 316L stainless steel case, large 8mm crown, fixed monoblock bezel, and internal gasket set provide 300 meters of water resistance. Based on its minimalistic presentation, specifically with Unimatic's own Dalcom photography, we were quite surprised by the near 14mm thickness of the case itself. Plus, it sits on two folds of the included NATO strap, which only further adds to its height on the wrist. 
We took some measurements and the total on wrist height is between 16 to 17 millimeters, which is extremely substantial. Even on our wearer's near 8 inch wrist, it still wore very large. If you have a smaller wrist size, we'd highly recommend ditching the NATO and opting for Unimatic's two-piece rubber strap, which will at least shave off the extra thickness added by the NATO, and will allow the case back to sink into the meatier part of your wrist. Underneath the flat sapphire, 2.8mm thick to be precise, the dial includes only the essentials, and what would those be on a dive watch? Well, loom, of course, and heaps of it. The markers are all set in a pale green C3 Superluminova, as are the, what, Unimatic dubs phantom ladder hands against the matte black dial. A really heavy application of loom seemed to allow the dial elements here to glow for a long, long time in our tests, along the lines of what we've seen from Citizen's Promaster divers. Opting for a Seiko caliber instead of a Miyota or Ida like we've seen with other modern micro brands, and Laurier comes to mind with the former, the UC4 uses the Seiko NH35A as its beating heart, providing a 41 hour power reserve, a 21,600 BPH beat rate, hacking seconds, and hand winding. In typical military inspired fashion, the UC4 uses a thick, durable NATO strap to keep the case firmly tethered to the wrist, but it's something we usually see reserved for field watches, where rubber or silicone for divers is far more common. That being said, at 22mm, finding other options should be a fairly painless process. If you don't end up finding something third party to your liking, we'd suggest looking at Unimatic's TPU quick release strap options as a safe bet for the warmer upcoming summer months. Pack your bags again because we are headed to the Big Apple. Much like Unimatic in Italy and Baltic in France, Laurier out of New York, New York is a micro brand making massive waves, but doing so right here in the States. There must have been something in the air in 2017. Not only did we get Baltic, but we also got Laurier, whose husband and wife duo sought to leverage their passion for vintage watches into a watchmaking venture themselves. Today we're looking at the Laurier Falcon Series 3, one of the six current watches that comprise Laurier's core collection. It stands as one of the smallest, sharing a 36mm case size with the Astra, a similar sporty dressy all-white sector dial you should also consider if you're a fan of Art Deco hues. Laurier technically classifies the Falcon as a field watch, though its versatility is clearly evident. You could just as well say rugged dress watch, with its smaller 36mm size certainly helping. You could also just as easily say vintage inspired sports watch. The dark, textured grey dial and brushed stainless steel build in our eyes definitely lends itself to everyday wear you could easily pull off with a more casual fit. Back in the early 50s, Tudor launched their new creation, the Oyster Prince, as a rugged tool watch. It accompanied explorers to the Arctic and timed extreme 1,000 mile moto races like the Monaco International Trophy, but by all accounts, most would look at it today as a dressy watch. Laurier would like to revitalize the perception with their creations that tool watches can just as well take on more elegant forms. See, our favorite part about the Falcon and what makes it such a capable everyday wear piece is the balance between style and utility. Yes, it's obviously vintage inspired, obviously extremely beautiful, but Laurier as a whole isn't satisfied with looks alone. The Falcon Series 3 has 100 meters of water resistance, a full 316L marine grade stainless steel case, an easily correctable domed Hesselite crystal above the dial, and bright BGW9 Superluminova used to set the numerals and markers, and inset within all three of the hands. They've also backed it up with a cutting-edge no-date Miyota Series 9 movement, the 90S5 automatic, which allows for a smooth second sweep by way of the 28,800 BPH beatrate, and allows the Falcon to stay quite thin at just 9mm without factoring in the domed crystal on top. Truth be told, the bracelet is most often where we see sub-$500 watches, microbrand or not, fall apart. Sometimes quite literally, but we won't name any names. Not the case at all with the Falcon Series 3, and we can report that's been the case with each and every Laurier we've reviewed. The passion that's quite clearly evidenced in the rest of the watch extends into the bracelet as well. The Turnian bracelet comes with a few upgrades from the Series 2 Falcon, like rounder, thinner links, and a few more fine chamfers on the edges. You also get screw pin links instead of push pins and three micro adjustments on the clasp, making the resizing process a breeze. We took Greeley's advice, embarked across the country, and will end our guide in High Consumption's backyard, Los Angeles, California, with the young experimental watchmaking operation Notice. 2017, yes again, and that makes three, saw Notice produce their first watch, a hyper-engineered diver which set them on a course to continue their experimental approach and has led them to the present having built a solid catalog of durable, modern timepieces. Notice now has more than a few automatic watches under $500, but we went with one of the most utilitarian of the lot, the Notice Sector D. Before we get crucified in the comments, yes, it's technically above $500, 
But if you have the opportunity to push your budget just a touch, trust us, the Sector Deep is 100% worth your consideration, and here's why. Well, first, it looks damn good. They've taken the Sector family's base case shape and have attached a chunky, exceedingly rugged, two-tone, DLC-coated timing bezel right on top. Second, the Sea Dweller-like, Twilight Zone-compatible, 500-meter water resistance rating of the case. Very few divers under $1,000, let alone closer to $500, come with such intense specifications. Look to Squale with the 1521 Classic, but expect to pay around $400 more than the Sector Deep. But this is exactly what Notice set out to do as a watch research and design company. They put out a diver with 500 meters of water resistance, not because folks demand this level of utility, very few ever would, but simply because they've shown they can, and at an unmatched price point. The Sector Deep has a few unique design considerations, the first of which you may have already picked up on. The Deep uses a left side screw down crown, which technically makes it a destro diver. Destro, Italian for right or right handed in this case. That being said, it's still highly wearable on both wrists, and if you want a Deep with a right sided crown, you'll have to be okay with the deep text on the dial applied in rich green instead of red, and swaps the matte black dial background for what they dub as blue orthodox. That being said, you do get a healthy serving of Grade A BG W9 Super Luminova Lume on both versions. Second, they've really paid attention to the details of the user experience, which is great for a highly utilitarian diver, one that is, at the end of the day, a tool. Heaps of grip on the screw down crown, a 120 click timing bezel, double tab quick release spring bars for the bracelet, and Notice's proprietary Node X push button clasp featuring a Tudor-esque push-pull micro adjustment system. A 42mm bezel on top of a 38mm fully matted stainless steel case, a highly wearable 47mm lug to lug, and a substantial 13.6mm thickness on the wrist. At its heart, Notice employs the Japanese made Seiko NH35, providing a power reserve of 41 hours, a 21,600 bph beat rate, and accuracy regulated by Notice themselves. In the same vein as Laurier, Notice did not skimp with the bracelet. The case's matted finish extends here as well with all three rows, and large, highly accessible screw pin links make large size adjustments as quick as they can get. And like we mentioned, if you need any further micro adjustments, all that's done with the push-pull quick release mechanism built into the Node X clasp. A sincere thank you for sticking with us to the end of our guide. Yes, even if you did skip around. There are many absolutely stellar automatic watches under $500, so if you didn't see your favorite get any love, just drop us a line below as we always love to hear from you. Also make sure to stop by our .com for even more watch related guides.